And then I had to do the drums. And they got me this famous drummer to do it. And I finally, the, he goes to me, he calls up, you know, Universal Pictures, and he says, I don't think she could do it. He's like, she can't separate her hands from her feet. I'd be like... <laughs> and he's like, come on, Tara, come on, you got to do it. Like, I tried so hard, and I was even giving up myself. And then all of a sudden, one day, I was like... I learned how to do it, and I was like the cookie monster. And I was like, yes! Who is ready to make some iconic 2000 stars right now? All right, without further ado, let's bring out Tara Reid. And Rachel Lee Cook. Well, how are we feeling so far today? Is it exciting to be here with the fans? Tara, I'm beyond excited. Thank you, Dory. Thank you for representing in your immaculate outfit. <laughs> thank you. I am so incredibly happy to be here, and thank you all for being here with us. Thank you. And I agree 100% with Rachel. It's amazing to see all you guys, and thank you for coming. And it's also amazing just to be with Rachel. She's also one of my best friends, and I just absolutely love her, and she's amazing. I love that. Thank you, T. Love you. I love you more. <laughs> well, thinking of that closeness that you guys have, how often is the gang getting back together? I would say, I would say exactly in the neighborhood of not often enough. <laughs> and it took your gracious invitation. Thank you, Awesome Con, for us to be here. And thank you for you guys for, you know, ringing the bell to be like, hey, bring him in. So, again, thank you. Thrilled to be here. <laughs> I totally agree with that. Thank you, Awesome Con. And, uh... It's not so not random for me and Rachel, but for true, me, true. Rachel and Rosario, definitely random. <laughs> exactly. We should just pretend that Ro is right here, yeah, we just right and then there. we can just like throw her the questions that we don't want to answer. <laughs> right like, what do you think, Ro? And then we can just put it right there. <laughs> totally, totally. Well, I think the best part about this film is that connection that you guys have. Was it instant for you guys? I mean, we never know who should talk first, so you take it. <laughs> you do it was do. it was amazing. I mean, it was for me. I've done like a hundred movies already. And my favorite movie I've ever done is Josie and the Pussycats, hands down. And working with Rachel and Rosario on that one, it was just three girls. It was like we were in sleepaway camp. You know, we shot it in Canada, and we all stayed in the same hotel. We went to the same cool restaurants. We became best friends with the Italian restaurant across the street from us. Like. We had so much fun. It was unbelievable. Do you remember that one shot when we were shooting this scene? It was freezing outside, and we, we finished doing it, and they had, like, three pairs of Uggs all lined up on the street. Do you remember that? That was a constant, because as you guys have seen the movie, you probably can't. I mean, I'm only 5'2", so I spent the whole thing basically on Apple boxes and in heels this big. So, yeah, our Uggs were everywhere. <laughs> yeah. well, when was the last time that you guys watched the movie? I have no idea. Not, not <laughs> recently enough. Also a good question. We should watch it again. We should watch it again. Yeah, we get should the game that. together, watch it together. <laughs> good idea, Dory. I will laugh so hard. <laughs> well, when thinking about this film, it obviously at the time was not met with all the praise, but now it is. Was that a surprise to you at the time? And especially looking forward, you guys are here. We have the fans here. They're loyal. I mean, okay, I'll jump on that one. Um, Rosario, pipe down. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, look, I, I guess you, I could say I never ex expect something to be a success. You just hope it's going to be. And I really hoped that, you know, the magic and the chemistry that I felt, you know, and the, the humor that I saw being played out every day by these brilliant actors when we were on set, I really hoped that it would sort of catch fire and that people would love it. But I never, I never expect these things. Um, I had been lucky enough to work quite a bit before at Josie, and I knew that, y you know, it's, it's a little bit of a crapshoot if, if something's really going to catch on or not. But I knew that I wanted people to see our movie. I knew that I felt passionately that it was something special. But yes, you can never count on people totally getting it. But it's a testament to the movie and the filmmakers uh, themselves and the music and the incredible cast that you guys are here. You guys are the testament that the movie works all these years later, and this is all the validation that I need, so thank you. And I, 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 I agree with everything that Rachel's saying, too. I think one of the sad parts of it is that if this movie came out now, it would have been huge. But 
I really feel like this movie was ahead of its time. It's before social media. It was before that. So no one really got like the orange is the new black, you know, Nike is the new Adidas, you know, all the subliminal messages. Um, and now it, it would work. But at that time, people didn't get it. And then as time went by, now we have this amazing cult following. So we didn't get the surprise of what we wanted at first. But then all these years later, now it's coming to us. And it means so much to us. that We have these incredible, amazing fans. So thank you. So one of the things I love about this film is the costumes. They're just so incredible. Did that ever kind of influence your style at the time, or was it just too out there? I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Tara, I always say that Tara is the most rock and roll of the three of us, and that is still true. Um, she wore those outfits like, like she woke up in them. I, it took me a minute to be like, okay, I'm going to own this. Here we go. Um, I remember when I left, I left the set. There was a weekend off, and it was um, the MTV Movie Awards. And I had I borrowed one of the outfits from the set and wore it to the MTV Movie Awards. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm impressed, but not surprised. <laughs> um, but, yeah, our um, incredible costume designer, Lisa Evans, who's gone on to do so many incredible films and before that, too, um, she brought us, do you remember the sketches that she did of oh, the outfits? She was incredible. Like, you had to see the sketches and the clothes and the detail she did. But the designer, they, they often do sketches of, like, you know, what they want the general look and things will be. But that's not usually what actually shows up on the day. It's, it, you know, it's like when you see fashion sketches that go on the runway. It's an idea. But the actual image, like the actual items she somehow made possible. I, I will always be blown away the work that she and did. And also, like, she made Rachel really be Josie. She made Tara, me really be Melody. You know, like, she made... Hi, Rosario. What do you want to say here? <laughs> you know, but um, they, she made these... She made us, like, every time I'd get up in the morning and I'd go in my trailer and put in the outfits, I felt like Melody. Like, she, she partly, like, made those characters come true. Yeah. She was amazing. The movie would not be, you know, what it was without her work. Agreed. Do you have anything from the set at all? Did you take anything? 100%. You trying to get me in trouble? No. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I took a bunch of the wardrobe. I have some of the original ears. Um, I feel like none of the fabrics that it that a lot of the items were made with, especially the shirts, were especially like built to last. I'm sure that they have decayed <laughs> quite a bit in my storage boxes by now. But yeah, what do you take, T? Um, I take everything from every movie when it comes to wardrobe. It's in my contracts. But I swear to God, this is the one time I didn't take anything. It's the weirdest thing. And this is the one I should have taken everything because I love the outfits and they still would have fit. Well, we went shopping a lot in Vancouver, so <laughs> yeah. you just probably didn't have the suitcase space. We went shopping like every day. <laughs> well, I know you guys had to learn a full soundtrack worth of songs for this film, and I heard you guys even went to band camp. Take this? it, Tara. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here I go. So none of us knew how to play these instruments at first, right? So Rach had to learn, you know. Guitar. I know. And then, oh, say, I was going to have you say it. And then Rosario had to do the, um, what did she, bass. Bass. Yeah. And then I had to do the drums. Okay. And I couldn't, we had to take it every day for like weeks and months. Every single day for like five days a week, eight hours a day. And they got me this famous drummer to do it. And I finally, the, he goes to me, he calls up, you know, Universal Pictures and he says, I don't think she could do it. He's like, she can't separate her hands from her feet. I'd be like, and he's like, come on, Tara, come on, you got to do it. Like, I tried so hard, and I was even giving up myself. And then all of a sudden, one day, I was like, I learned how to do it, and I was like the Cookie Monster, and I was like, yes. People said we said that you looked like animal from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, of the songs you had to learn to perform, what was your favorite and least favorite? I love Spin Around for just like that drive that it has. The drive and the build, I think, is so good. But, and I shouldn't probably say this, but my favorite songs are the Du Jour songs, which obviously we didn't play, but I, God, they're brilliant. But Rachel was so good, like, at being Josie. Like, she was 
the front runner, and she demanded it. She demanded the uh, like the audience, like and that's a hard job to fill. Thank you. To be like, the, you know what I mean? To be the front runner, like we at least got to stay in the back. She had to like hold like this whole scene like this, you know. I'm just in the back going like, hey, hey, you know, like. No, but, but you had the hardest so job in some good. senses though, because we could. Rosario and I could get our instrumentation wrong, you and you so wouldn't be able good. to tell. But like, you can tell if you're playing the drums wrong. It is very clear when they play the song <laughs> if you're playing the drums. Are you saying wrong. I play the drums wrong? Okay. I'm saying <laughs> someone give to a recording contract. <laughs> no, we actually had. I mean, there was, the last scene, one of the last scenes in the movie, we actually filled up the stadium, and. Uh, Rachel was out, and Rosario was out, and I was underground, and then my stage came up, and we had all the people there, and I swear to we God. We had all the paid people yeah, to be there. <laughs> all the paid people, but I swear to God, I've never had a feeling like that in my life. I really felt like we were rock stars, and I'm like, you know what? Rock stars are so much better than being an actress. <laughs> <laughs> Were there ever talks of taking this out on the road, like a tour of sorts? Dory, that's ridiculous. Why? <laughs> <laughs> if we had to do it right now, none of us would have to play. Can you still play the guitar? No. Yeah. No, that, my, my guitar like knowledge I can't play the drums at all. A couple months. No, I, I can play the bongos. <laughs> we all want to see that. Show of hands, you can see Tara play the bongos later. I'm very good at it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, I mean, like, I wish that that was true. I, I can't sing. Like, this, we, frankly, probably wouldn't be cast if the movie was made today because you could, ca you could find people, you know, that who knew can the drums, do that knew all the guitar, of that knew the bass. these things for sure. Um, yeah, they were like, you know, uh, who was it? Well, but Kenny Babyface like, Edmonds was like, um, you know, of course we would love it to be your voice, so come into the studio with Deb and Harry, our directors, and but if I you can carry a tune... You will be able to sing in this movie. And I was like, I'm going to sing in the movie. <laughs> and then I go in, and I'm like, la, 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 la. They're like, you're not going to be singing in the movie. <laughs> no, they had, to, they had to train us so much. I tried. It was so bad, you guys. No, no, we weren't bad at the end. Like, we sucked in the beginning. Like, you we're were great. worse. I just can't sing. But she's right. But she said, like, we wouldn't have got cast in these days. But, that, but that's when movies back in those days, 20 years ago, were real movies. A lot of the movies you see now just aren't that good. Because... It's not fresh, but we learned these things, and we connected by by learning these things. It connected us, and uh, it, it, that's where you see the the relationships in the movie. Like it wasn't fake; it was real. Like we we loved each other. We did everything together. You guys, by the way, we would be done with set. Most people go home, remember their scripts. We would go across the street to the Italian restaurant, remember their scripts there, do this, that. Like, we all had our little spots. Like, we were always together, and no one had a fight or anything. Like, we didn't want to go home. <laughs> well, I heard there were some other names floating around in the auditions. Like, Ooh, Beyonce auditioned, I heard. Uh, yeah. Were there some other names that we haven't, like, heard about publicly? Did you screen test with some interesting people? I did not screen test with anybody. Um, I don't know who was on the list ahead of me, but I'm glad that they didn't do it, because in your face, I'm still here. And um, for me, I had a, mine was easy because I got lucky, because I had a three picture deal with Universal. So I had American Pie, then I had um, American Pie 2, and then Josie was my last picture with them. So I already had it in, so I didn't have to audition like she did. Rosario had audition. So she had to go against, if she had to go against Beyonce, she that's really crazy. That's, that's what crazy. <laughs> that's com that's wild to me. Um, I j I'm just starstruck that we were talking about Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, I never heard that. Uh, Can you imagine cool. we could have done it with Beyonce? <laughs> hey, I'm. She's right here. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Sarah. <laughs> no, but that's incredible. I I always uh, I, I find it difficult like to talk about like oh hey did you know I heard you were up for this and you didn't get it or did you you know like uh, why did you pass on such and such? it's sort of like difficult to talk about so in terms of like just that like all actors you know love and regret their decisions throughout the process so I always just stumble a little bit with that question forgive me no worries no worries she's just the most humble person you've ever met in your life that's the truth. Like, I'm a little more crazy, but she's not. She's humble and sweet and, like... Thank you. It's the truth. 
Like, if I need her for anything, I'm like, Rach, I'm in trouble, I need this, that. She's in my house, like, 10 minutes and gets me. No matter what. Like, that's how good of a person she is. Me, I'm like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing right now. (laughs) I'll be right over. (laughs) Well, if this film were ever rebooted, who would you want to see in your roles? Beyonce. (laughs) Fair. Us. I would want to remake it just like us. I mean, all rock bands go back together again, right? I mean, that's just what happens. I think we should remake Josie the Pussycats. That would be so much fun. I like this idea. I think we can get a campaign going for that. Yeah, let's make a campaign, guys. Let's go online. Let's rush it and make the studios at Universal. Have Josie and the Pussycats come back. And then you'll know that you guys made it happen. (laughs) (laughs) When thinking of this film, how would you say it's ultimately changed your life? I'm really going to have to think about that for a second. I... I feel grateful to be a part of something that I feel like will far outlast me in terms of, you know, the love and affection that, that people have for it. it. It feels like something lasting. That's very different for me anyway. What, what would you say? I think how it changed me was just that I think it, it showed me uh, something I've never really felt before of, like, trust and love, like, we had so much love, trust, and fun on that movie. I don't think I was ever that free before. And in that film, I felt like I got to open my arms and fly. And that that's the only movie I ever felt you like that. You took such wonderfully big swings with the comedy that would not have worked nearly as well from anyone <laughs> but you. Like, you were pitch perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, brilliant. So are you. <laughs> These walls are mushy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, when thinking about this film's legacy, why do you think it's resonated after all these years? It always feels good to be in on the joke, right? Um, And you guys are in on it. And you brought your friends in on it. And that's, I think, what's cool. I think also the innocence of the characters. Like, there was such innocence there, and they wanted to make a band. They didn't really know. It was kind of a garage band. And you see them do this stuff. Like, even this, even the, one of my favorite scenes is when um, those crazy groupie girls come to her door. So and I answer the door, and they're like, ah! And then I'm like, ah! And then, like, we all run away. Like, like, it went so fast, you know? So I think that whole thing just showed us, even before, like, it showed us fame before we were even famous. It showed us what to feel like, you know, in a certain way. And I think there was this... Uh, there's basically just this feeling that we got from that movie that was so special. And to see that all of you guys get it so many years later, it's just mind-blowing to me. And it's I think it's beautiful. Well... How about we open up for a little Q&A from the fans? Yeah. Hi. Oh, hi. Uh, hi. Um, my name's Tim, and I just want to first just thank you because when this movie came out, um, I would just finished like my freshman year in high school. It was a new, it was a new school, and it was like torture because I knew nobody there, and I felt like there was all this pressure about trying to fit in, and I have to do this, and wait, no, now it's changed, and now I got trying to keep up, and it was, it was just too much for me to really keep on, so when this movie came out, it was like the perfect movie that I needed to hear at that time, and so when did you kind of feel like this movie was more than just like, it was not just ahead of its time, but really it was a message that teens and of all ages and people of all ages really needed to hear? I, I'm having like a little bit of a a good kind of flashback in this moment from your question about, you know, that message that we shout from the stage to a crowd not unlike this, and Tara's next to me, this is all very meta, but that be yourself, think for yourself, you know, that is exactly what high schoolers, you know, and like you said, high schoolers of all ages, you need to hear the most. And you said, at what point did you realize it was about you know, that the movie was about more than just the message of, like, you know, sisterhood and not conforming. Yeah, and, and more did you feel like, 
this was resonating with like um, people at large more, more than just in terms of just like you, how can you saying you felt like the movie was ahead of its time and it just mm-hmm. now it's really starting to catch on as like a cult following. But when did you really start to feel like, okay, people are catching on to it, not just for the humor, but for the message behind it? I gotta be honest, Tim, like, I feel like it took me a long time. It took me a really long time, decade plus, maybe more, because people get really caught up in the financials. And what you hear about real quick is that the movie did, you know, it it was good, but it wasn't good business. Um, So that was hard to just have something that you really, you know, poured your heart, soul, and time into sort of be reduced to, to numbers. But this is where we get to turn that around. And I, I appreciate it. And I'm glad that high school you heard the message in the way that it was intended. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kat. Uh, my question is for Tara. Um, or Tara. Uh, I watched you in Special Forces and I was so impressed with just how hard you worked in there and I just wanted to hear about what you got from that show because it was it was a lot and I I just want to hear what you felt and what you got out of that experience it's a great question um we were just talking about this the other day actually she was telling me about it on the plane on the way over here I I was on the edge of my seat. I was so worried for you. Please talk about this show. But, yeah, so I think I got a lot out of it. Like, because, I mean, I broke down. It broke my soul down. It, it, it showed you who you really are. Like, and, and a lot of times, especially in life, you know, all of us hide from our, our secrets or our, our things that we're insecure about. And this wasn't something that you could hide or whatever. So it was truly who you were. And it was a test of your own self. And and it was scary, you know? But it bought a lot of things that, like, in life, a lot of times we have things that are going on, you kind of put a Band-Aid over it. And I realized on that show how many Band-Aids I had on myself. And I feel like a lot of them came off on that. And uh, I think it was good for my soul. Well, thank you. I it was, thank you. I was very impressed with you. Thank you so much. Hi, guys. I'm Andrew. This question for Rachel. Um, so my question is, my favorite one of your projects was She's All That. And what I was wondering is there's just such a powerful message about love just isn't, you know, something that you just take. It's something that you really just work on together. What I was wondering was if you personally got a chance to extend the movie by five minutes to add in different cuts that you got film or edits or deleted scenes that you did, what would you add in to extend the film that kept with the message of the movie? Um, our director got in a lot of... Tra- and thank you for your, your uh, deep understanding of you know, the message again, thank you. Um, (laughs) Unpopular opinion, uh, apparently not shared by the studio, but definitely shared by the director. We we, we caught a lot of flack about how long the the dance sequence is in that movie. They're like, this is ridiculous, but if you could ask me where I would put in another five minutes, it's right on that dance sequence. (laughs) Let go. I'm like, no, no, more dancing. That is my absolute final answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name's Maya. Uh, Josie and the Pussycats is a movie about badass, powerful women. And I think both of, all three of you are badass, powerful women. Good job, Sarah. Um, so is there a particular song that makes you feel particularly badass? Not just from the movie, but in general. Uh. God, my kids always make fun of my music taste, so I don't even, I'm, I'm scarred. I don't want to answer this question. <laughs> What's it? I don't even remember what the song is. You guys could help me out. But um, there was that movie, like, years ago, and, like, she shaves her head, like, something on fire. G.I. Jane. Yeah, no. Man on Fire. For Man on Fire with Denzel Washington. No. Say more words. No, she's like. Be for Vendetta? Like, you know, she's all pretty, and she's, like, gets all mad. 
shaves her head. She's all badass. Someone like, help. It's like Billie Jean. Billie Jean. Is it Billie Jean? Billie Jean, right? Okay. I think that's, I think that. Yeah? What? Is it a song from? What? Yeah, that's it. That sounds cool. Oh, it's a dope movie. I would totally remake that movie in a second. But what song? They said what song? Do you know the song? Can anyone sing it? Is it the song from that movie? No, yeah, that's the song in it. Oh, oh, okay. Can anyone sing it? Yeah, yes. Ben Shard did. Sing can it. anyone sing it? Can you give, can you give me the microphone? <laughs> come up, come up. I guess. That's a great song, though. It's dope. It's hot. Ooh. Love, Love is a batter filled. We are young. Yeah, that's a really good song. I don't think I can. Hi, you're talking about the legend of Billie Jean and Pat Benatar's Invincible. Absolutely. Nice. Yes. yes. <laughs> nice one. Great song. I feel like we were playing charades right there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Oh, yeah. I just want to say, my name's Erica, and I've been to a con somewhere in the country every year for the past eight years, and so often I see panels and I think, wow, you might actually be a terrible person in real life or a dirty old man, and right now I feel like I'm with my friends and I just love it. Um, I just have a question, so her Tara, and I'm sure Rachel has an answer too. Melody always has little knots in her hair. And I just wonder, how did you make that happen? Because all the times I tried to dress like Josie oh and the Pussycats, God, so yeah. I couldn't make that work for me. Okay, you had these cute... Okay, Tara had very long hair in the movie. She also, you know, like, they had these thin sort of pieces that had, pieces that had like a light, just actual literal knot that would then sort of be... It was sort of like hairsprayed... If you yeah. put like, put like, like little, little cardboard or whatever behind the piece with a light knot in it, spray it there... Uh, I don't think it was secured in any other way, and hair is slippery enough that it's not going to, like, compress down and, and actually it. turn into a knot. So I remember that as well. That was iconic. Good catch. Thank you. My mom said it was a wig, but I'm going to tell her it was real. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Hi. My name is Sarah. Um, one of my favorite scenes is, like, the hairstyling, makeup scene, and the music video. Did you have, like, a favorite scene to film? That music video entire montage was the day that the directors were most annoyed with us. Because they wanted to kill us that day. We knew that we didn't have any lines to say, and so when you see us just cutting up... So I up, kept banging my head, like, ha, 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 ha. Yep. Like, they, um, they were very frustrated with us because we were just laughing the whole time laughing. because we knew that we could just have, like, a free-for-all with it. Some funny things about the montages in general, the one that opens the movie, um, we were, one of the Riverdale sort of mandates was that like, it shows that we have good oral hygiene, so that's why we're brushing our teeth in the mirror. And they also said that Riverdale characters have to um, show kindness for animals, so that's why we're playing with the kittens. And I cry um, when I see the puppies. Yes. <laughs> So lots of funny kind of mandates played into what ended up being really fun sequences in the movie. Awesome. Thank you. Testament to the directors. Thank you. Amazing. Well, there we have it. We're done here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, We really appreciate you. Thank you for coming. Uh, Do you have one question? I can see that you're standing there. We'll take one more. We'll we'll do one more. Yeah. This question is for uh, Rachel. What was Paul Walker like? Okay, way to bring down the mood. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I shouldn't have asked him. No, no, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Good Lord, he was hot. I just had to... He was the nicest guy ever. He was ever. so nice yeah. and so humble. And I always describe Paul as the most non actor actor you've ever met. Right. It's like someone, you know, who was supposed to be in the movie couldn't do it, and they just ran out to the beach and grabbed a surfer, yeah, and they were like, like would you like dude. to be in a movie? And Paul Walker was like, yes. Like, that's his, his vibe and his essence. But he also, no, I'm not being dismissive. Like, he took the work incredibly seriously. And I will never forget the scene where he comes to my house and is trying to come, trying to, trying to get Lainey to come to the dance with him. And he gives this very earnest, totally full of shit, speech. <laughs> I remember the camera operator taking his hand off the eyepiece and going, damn, I believed him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, me too. <laughs> Whatever you want. So yeah, we love Paul. It's, it's Paul. the message of, of that is um, call the people you care about. Um, even if you only you only connected briefly, you never know. You just you just plain never know. 
Thank you. I mean, I think two of our greatest losses of that, of our generation, was definitely Paul and also, also like, Heath Ledger. He yeah. was one of my best friends. Like, he was the kindest and craziest person because he's from Australia. And I remember one day I go to his house. I don't know how we got to the story right now. <laughs> I go to his house <laughs> and he has all these like blown up kangaroos all over his house, like like in the pool, on the ceilings. I'm like, what is he doing? And he always like had five guys that live with him from Australia. Like he always had his boys. And then I look at him and all of a sudden I see these kangaroos just popping. I'm like, he's putting cigarettes in the kangaroos. The fake, they go in the pool in their mouth and just pop, 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 pop. I'm like, he's lost his mind. Well, that <laughs> That's is a weird a story. story. <laughs> yeah. That's a real inside story. But yeah, thank you guys for coming. Really appreciate thank you. Good you. Night. Thank you all. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is Alex Malari Jr. and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching.